हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सत्य प्रकाश वेलकम टू माय चैनल दिस इज पार्ट 28 ऑफ वेब एपीआई इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस हाउ टू कंज्यूम वेब एपीआई फ्रॉम कंसोल एप्लीकेशन सो बिफोर गोइंग थ्रू दिस वीडियो प्लीज विजिट माय पार्ट 27 दैट इज कोविड-19 रिकॉर्ड डैशबोर्ड यूजिंग एसपी डॉट एंड एमबीसी वेब एपी एंड बूटस्ट्रैप एंड देयर इज वन मोर वीडियो व्हिच इज रिलेवेंट दैट इज Part number seven is SP.NET Web API using SQL Server and Entity Framework setup. Okay, and uh, these two videos you need to refer before 28 part video. So guys, in this video we'll discuss few points. That is how to set up HTTP client and how to consume Web API in console application. So here I have opened two instances of Visual Studio. One is for Web API right and this web api is running mode and you can see this is the web api response i'm getting all right so this already i have discussed in my previous videos and uh, second one is uh, that is the console application uh, instance of visual studio so there is few steps uh, for consume web api from console application so guys step number this is the step number one is add a class file <coughs> so this class file is uh, there is some properties in this class file i will show you so first of all this is my con uh, console application called consume web api console all right and uh, as for step number one we need to add class file so class file here i have created one folder called employee and inside i have added one class file called employee.cs all right so this class file with some properties that is we can use uh, when those when is necessary and these properties are same as with this web api response that is id first name last name gender and salary all right you can see the properties of of the class employee date all right and uh, there is one more step is uh, to install system dot net dot http dot formatting dot dll and new turn soft dot json from new get package manager so if what you'll do here is we just right click on it all right and that is we can here as manage new get package And guys, here you can see I have uh, installed that two DLL. One is Newton Soft JSON, and one is for System dot Net dot HTTP dot Formatting dot Extensions. All right. And uh, so, for what happened is there is one class called HTTP Client. So we need to import that uh, class using the namespace. So I'll discuss these things. All right. And uh, as for next step is. Uh, we need to add consuming web api so for consuming web api we need to <coughs> uh, configure in our program.cs file so this is the main entry class file of the console application so guys here we can see uh, there is few namespace we need one is for using system.net.http that is for uh, using the class HTTP client so we need to import this namespace and second one is this is the namespace for access, access the this class file employee C employee dot CS all right and inside main it is the entry point of our of our application all right so there is a few uh, line of course is for HTTP client you can see right so once I have import the namespace that is system.net.http, we will set our HTTP client and the properties uh, as you shown here, right? So as as we can see, we just giving the base address of our API that is the this one, right? Because our API URL is this one, so that we need to give this URL up to this, that is the localhost colon and this the port number, and we will create 
uh, an async action to get the data from our database by calling our web api right so this is the myth this is the async uh, task and method and we we have passed this uh, cons right this is the pro this is the object of http client and dot wait so wait is for the task to complete execution all right so and final step is we need to declare this method uh, so this is the final one so we can see that is the we have used the async and wait uh, and task concept here right so what it is so use async along with await and task if the async method returns a value back to the calling code we used only the async keyword in the program to demonstrate the simple asy asynchronous void method and the await keyword waits for the async method until a until it return a value so the main application thread stops th there and until it receives the return value so in this method my api uh, get i have passed the http client and i have used a uh, try catch block inside try using cons and i have used that http response message you can see here right and this http response message we can use the await right here and using get async method we have uh, mentioned the uh, the remaining url that is api employee and slash one so this is the id of employee so it will retrieve the employee id of one like here we will put here one for web api then it will retrieve only the employee details whose id is one all right and <clears throat> next step is we need to check the condition if that response object is success status code then and before that we have i have commented this line of code right so this line of code it throws an error if we get any exceptions so if you don't need the not don't need to throw this error so you can comment this or remove this line of code and if the async call is success the value in is success status code will be true right and inside we have our class file our object and await and the we need to use the read async and inside i have passed the employee debt uh, class and there is some console write line just uh, making some interface in our console application and it, it is just showing in the calling get operation and we need to show as id first name last name gender and salary and inside write line we just make some uh, space that is the zero index one second second that's the second index third index and fourth index and using this object we have access the parameter or properties of this class so em for under id it will show emp dot id value under first name it will show first name under last name it will show emp dot last name value under gender it will show emp dot gender under salary it will show emp dot salary right and after then we need to use the read line and in else method if any invalid value we pass which is does not exist in our db then in the else method else, else condition it will show that no records found and the read line is there and in catch block we have used some exception message which will show to the end user if any web api is running or not so currently my web api is running so that i am getting the response if the web api i'll stop the web api then it will show that message that check whether web api is running or not and after then we'll need to pass use the read line method all right so uh, this is all about code all right and uh, okay one more thing i will show you that so if you when you run the application and uh, you will get one exception like http content does not contain a definition for read async and no extension method read async accepting a first argument of type http content could be found and inside bracket are you missing a using a directive or an assembly reference in this line of code right so then what you will do is this is just because of read async is a part of system dot net dot http dot formatting dot dll which we already have added in our application under reference right so you can see i, I, I already told you right to uh, this is the by default when you create the console application system dot net dot http and this 
system dot net dot http dot formatting dot extension this one we need to download from our NuGet package and second one is newton soft.json after uh, adding in our reference folder then this error will be gone okay and uh, we can do it uh, without any error so uh, once you will do then we need to run our application here right and uh, okay before that we just uh, try to clean our solution and build our solution when it when it, it succeeded all right then we need to s how to run the console you can see one start is there right we just uh, click on it So guys, here we can see the uh, ID of one. That is one. First name is Ram one. Last name is Pradhan one. Gender is male. Salary thirty four thousand. The same response we'll check here using using our web API. You can see the web API response same. Okay, now we need to stop our console application. We just want to check the employee ID whose whose ID is employee details whose ID is uh, four. All right, and save these changes and uh, and again run our application. So this is the you can see the employee ID whose uh, employee details whose ID is four. First name is Philip. Last name is Hasting. Gender is male. Salary is forty five thousand. So we need to check the here in Web API for ID four. So after then we'll check Web API response for ID four. Okay, now you can see the Web API response here, right? Same here, same response I'm getting in our console application. Okay. Now we'll check the different scenario for. Okay, we need to close our application for console application. So guys, here sec third scenario is we need to pass some invalid employee ID four three four. Save these changes. We check here what will be what will be the response we are getting. So here I'm, I am getting that no records found. That means in our DB there is no records for ID 434. All right, and we'll check here in our web API for that ID value 434. And you can see in web API it will show, showing that employee with ID 434 not found. Right? Okay. Now we'll check here uh, one more last scenario in console application. That is. We need to stop our web API and then we'll uh, run our console application. We'll check with what will be the response we are getting here, right? And this is the step four that is run web API project and run console application project. So these two project we need to so we need to run parallelly. So as for our last scenario, we need to stop the web API project and check the console application project. Alright guys, so here is it is our web API project. We need to stop the debugging. So my web API is running, uh, uh, web API is stopped running. Then we will check our console application here. So just click on start. So guys here I'm getting the response that check whether web API is running or not. So that is because of my web API stops running so that the cat that there is some exception is found in our code and in cache block it will execute that line of code. So 
in the console application it is showing message check whether web api is running or not so that's all about guys how to consume web, web api in our console application and so we need to stop the debugging in our console application and go to the presentation here so guys uh, this is my channel subscribe and share it to get the updated knowledge on dot net dot and core c sharp sql server uh, deep devops and github so that's it for today guys thank you for listening have a great day